The village of Wallington was first recorded in around the year 1080 during the Doomsday Survey carried out by William the Conqueror to assess land, population and key economic assets. Oh look, I've got a cow. It was originally recorded as Wallington, Wallington. Well, how do you pronounce that? But how did it get this name? When the Anglo-Saxon invaders from mainland Europe began migrating to Britain in around the 6th century, they encountered the native Britons who were of Celtic origin and referred to them as Wialas, which meant stranger or foreigner. An odd concept given that it was the Anglo-Saxon invaders who were the non-natives. Oh, there's all these people coming in nicking our jobs. So based on the formation of Old English place names, we can break down the elements of Wallington into the following composite parts. Wall, from the Anglo-Saxon word Wialas, referring to the native Britons. Ing, usually a term meaning the people of. And Ton, the farm or settlement. So Wallington, a settlement belonging to the Britons. The word Wialas is directly related to Wales, which is how the country got its name. But that's another story. The original village of Wallington was centred around the bridge near the Grange and for a few hundred years was an important administrative centre to a wider area known in the early medieval period as the Wallington Hundred. Towards the end of the Middle Ages, Beddington became more dominant and Wallington's status was reduced. A number of mills and factories sprang up along the River Wandle and left their mark on the landscape by the mill ponds that still exist. There are also remnants of old boundary lines between the local parishes, like this one here in Westcroft Road, marking the division between Wallington and Shorten. This wall was built in 1792, which makes it just a little bit younger than the American Declaration of Independence. In 1844, the London Brighton and South Coast Railway Company proposed a new rail route to cut through the rural heartland of this agricultural suburb of a rapidly expanding London. At the time, the owner of Carshorton Park didn't want a railway built on his land as he felt it would ruin the landscape, so the track bed was laid down about a quarter of a mile south of the park. When it opened in 1847, the station here was initially called Carshorton Station and remained that way for just over 20 years when, in 1868, the current Carshorton Station was built and this one was renamed Wallington. Like most stations in growing suburban areas of the time, Wallington featured a siding where building materials, coal, food and supplies would have been delivered daily. The siding no longer exists and the area that it once was is now the station forecourt. The area to the north of the station was known as Wallington Old Town but by the time of World War I and following the success of the railway, the town spread slowly southwards, engulfing the lavender fields and it was here that the High Street became the new centre of Wallington. The town hall was built in 1932. There used to be a church here until the mid-90s when they knocked it down and replaced it with Sainsbury's and this used to be a cinema. So next time you're out and about in Wallington just remember that there's more to this place than meets the eye and that not everything was as it appears today. Not bad for a village with over a thousand years of history. Peace out Wallington.